Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, attorney Savania DeBarros. What's up, y'all? It's Savania DeBarros, the protector of athletes, and welcome to the special series called the NIL Combined Speaker Series. What you can expect from this series is to hear from dynamic speakers, professionals, and experts who are eager to support student athletes and help us to create a major impact off the field with name, image, and likeness. That's right, NIL. Hey, if you want to be a part of the conversation, and if you want to be a part of making this amazing impact, join us on July 27th through the 29th in Chicago by registering at bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023, bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. Again, that's bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. And make sure that NIL combine is in all caps. I'll see you there. Ciao. Hello, hello there. I'm Savannah Navarros, the protector of athletes, back with you again for our NIL Combine speaker interview series. Today, I have Dr. Derek Burgess, but before we dive into his conversation today and what brought him to the NIL Combine, I got to invite you guys, make sure that you come to NIL Combine 2023 live here in Chicago. Yes, you can join in person or virtually. Obviously, I want to see you and I want to hug you. I don't want to be able to talk to you, but I also know that people have things going on, right? So even if you couldn't come in person, you can still make your presence known by going to bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023, bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. Again, that's bit.ly forward slash NIL Combine 2023, and you got to make sure that NIL Combine is in all caps so you can be taken directly to the page, all right? Now, I got to tell you guys this as well. NIL Combine is the number one premier event for name, image, and likeness. Our entire purpose is to make sure that we can break down barriers that have often left black and brown communities in a situation where they were unable to really soar and take off and create a future on their own terms. So we are in this in this process and on this mission to change that, to change the narrative around what our future should be and what it should look like. So if you're down with that, then you got to join me. Again, go to bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. So again, I'm super excited to invite Dr. Derek Burgess on stage today. Um, some of you guys may be familiar with him because he was on the podcast, the What Are You Sporting About, what are you sporting about podcast before, but Dr. Derek Burgess, I'm just going to call him Dr. Burgess, <laughs> but um, he is an orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician, and I'm going to let him just kind of give you guys a little bit more background about who he is, what he does, so that you can know the man that I know, all right? Go ahead, Dr. Burgess. Well, first, thank you for having me on the flip platform. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your NIL combine. Um, as you mentioned, Derek Burgess, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I'm a sports medicine specialist. And, you know, I've been able to have an interesting interaction with athletes and not only taking care of them from a health standpoint, but I feel that the mindset is so important as well. Your health and your wealth are tightly, uh, you know, correlated when it comes to an athlete. So I want to be able to help in any way possible. I'm just very excited to be a part of it. I love that. So let's start off with something you just said, your health and wealth. 
are very much correlated. Talk to us a little bit about that, because I think uh, people see them as being two totally separate issues. You know, I can be wealthy without necessarily being healthy or I can be healthy, but I'm not wealthy. So right. why is it important to think of them as the same or, or germane to one another? Yeah. So especially just concentrating on an athlete, we know that you have a limited amount of time to be able to play your sport at a high level as a professional athlete, no matter what the sport is. So if you're not going to be able to maximize that short period of time by being healthy, you know that if you're on the sideline or if you're injured or you're placed on an injured reserve list, sooner or later, people will lose interest in you as being your name, image, and likeness. So you have to really strike wise hot. So I think not only the health of your limbs or the health of your body, but the health of your mind as well. And that's something that's often overlooked in modern day medicine. So I think wellness is a totalitarian concept of being healthy, not only in body, but also mind and soul. If you have all of that, you're going to be able to maximize your wealth as well, especially with name, image and likeness. That's good stuff. Now, Dr. Burgess, you are a man that does a lot of things. You are a physician, which by itself is already a busy professional yeah. title to have, right? A busy yeah. profession to be in. But you also are a podcast host. You are a father. You are a medical director. Like there's so many other hats that you wear. And so what I want you to do is talk to us about balancing and how that flows into that health space um, because you've been able to, you've been able to balance yourself. Most people see that as a woman thing, but as a, as a male, as a black male, you've been able to be successful in your life while also balancing other roles, other roles that are as important as being a physician. Right. So talk to us Absolutely. a little bit about that. Yeah, it's difficult. And, you know, we always talk that work-life balance and many times when you hear work-life balance, you're thinking, I'm trying to achieve 50-50. And I'm not even really sure if 50-50 is what I'm aiming for. Um, in certain seasons, it might be 70-30. In other seasons, it might be flip 60-40, whatever. But I think the main thing with work-life balance is really having a passion for what you do, as well as surrounding yourself with good people. There will be no work-life balance without my wife. Uh, there will be no work-life balance without being able to have my family bought into what I'm doing. So I think being able to really share your vision and have your family buy into your vision is important because my kids know that during football season, dad's going to be on the road traveling with the team. You know, he might miss a couple of our games. I'm going to do my best. They know that if I'm in town or anywhere close to town, I'm going to be on the sideline with them. So they sacrifice. It's a sacrifice for everyone involved, my wife, my kids, you know, the medical practice, my partners that I'm in, sometimes they have to cover because I might be on the road with a sporting event. So I think work-life balance is really important, but you have to really define what it is for you and for your family and what that looks like in order to really be able to achieve it. That's good. That's really good. Um, Cause I think so many of us kind of fall into the pit hole of, of, well, we don't really have balance or what does balance really look like? But I, I like yeah. the perception of we have to define it for ourselves because will we ever fully achieve it? I don't know. Like, will we ever right. achieve full balance in our lives? <clears throat> I don't know. But I, I love the way that you describe it around figuring out what's important to you, helping your family and those that you love to buy into your vision. And that takes me on the path to something else is, how do we really get to the place of recognizing what the vision is and defining it in a way where we can get that buy-in, right? Because sometimes we might have a vision that's larger, you know, than maybe other people that are around us that haven't done anything similar or close to what we're doing. Um, and sometimes it's difficult. It's difficult for people to understand something that they can't see, but you can Absolutely. see. Absolutely. So how have you been able to do that? So like, as you mentioned, it's very difficult because I am a dreamer of sorts. So I have these wild ideas and, you know, I pray and I seek God about them. And many times I'm currently in one of them right now. I'm in the midst of a job transition right now. And people will like to ask me questions about how does this work? And your wife has a practice and this, that and the third. What about the kids? I don't have all the answers, but I do know where I'm headed. And 
when you believe in your vision and you're able to really share the purpose behind it. You know, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Um, less than 2% of orthopedic surgeons look like me. There are less than 2% of practicing orthopedic surgeons in America that are African-American. So I feel that my calling is to do more than just walk into an office and take care of patients or take care of them in a surgical suite. I feel that I have to be an example for what is possible because if I can't show the next generation what's possible, then it's very difficult for them to achieve it. And I feel that mentorship and so is important. And that's one reason why I have this podcast is really to uplift and inspire others. Um, you know, the main things that I talk about is strengthening your mindset, helping you grow your assets and helping you achieve whatever level of success you want for your life. And as we mentioned before, first you have to define success and then you can really go after it. So it's a difficult thing. Um, you know, I feel like right now the vision, what I see, I can see it, but the roadmap is not necessarily there. So I have to do the work to create the path to get to where I'm going. Because as you mentioned, how many orthopedic surgeons do you know that are podcasters, that are entrepreneurs, uh, that are doing the things that I'm doing? So I'm in a field where really I'm kind of blazing my own trail. And I thank God I have a family that buys into it and that believes in me. No, that's good. Um that's really good because that is what a lot of students are dealing with now with name, image, and likeness, which is one reason why we launched an IL combine yes. on the back end of publishing the Athletes Making Moves book is because we know that people will need help. The right. path to getting what you are envisioning is not always a straight path. Right. It's not always lined up with the right answers and the right support. Um it can be a very arduous process. <laughs> yeah. And so having people like you who continue to dream, continue to dream um, big, continue to have these visions of what the future can look like, what it actually can be is inspiring and motivating because it, I think it also helps students to realize that you're dreaming about this one thing now, but that dream is going to get even bigger. And once you're able to really achieve something the way that you want to achieve it, like you're going to know it's going to open up a world of possibilities. Right. Right. What do you think about that? So as you were saying that I thought about when I interviewed you and we talked about building your table because you're literally building your own table as you're sitting at it right now with this NIL combine and being the protector of the athletes. So I completely agree with the fact that when you're going to do something new, many times you're not going to have an example to follow, mm -hmm. right? And NIL is still in its infancy. I mean, what are we now, two years in? Yep. And it's literally the wild, wild west. So I feel that what you're doing is so important because the athletes need to be educated about what exactly they're getting into and what their name, image, and likeness is and how important it is. And it's more important than whatever commercial that you, someone is trying to approach you with whatever brand they want to get you to attach to because they need you as an athlete. They need your name, image, and likeness. You are truly your own brand. And once you really appreciate that and know your self-worth, then you're able to negotiate and move differently and be able to attract more because people will really see that you're comfortable in your own skin, number one, and they need you in your real, in your real purpose and in your passion because that's going to really show. I mean, if you're, you know, say, for instance, if you have never fished before and you are going to just sign a deal with a fishing brand, people will be able to see through that pretty quickly. So you have to know who you are first and then other people will be able to realize that and accept that. No, that's really good stuff. And you have a fan out there um, who I'm going to assume might be an orthopedic surgeon. He said, okay. thankfully, there are 140 African-American orthopedic surgeons in the pipeline. Um, and this is also another reason why it's so impactful to have you, because typically we will see doctors who are doing like physical, some type of physical um, advancement or improvement for athletes, but never really doctors who are orthopedic surgeons, at least I haven't seen any, who have um, a keen focus in sports medicine. And this is one reason why I definitely want to have you. And thankfully, you've, you've answered the call to being on yeah. NIL Combine as a speaker. 
So why did you answer the call? Why did you say yes? Well, number one, simply put, I believe in what you're doing. Um, and I believe that education is key and we have to be able to inform the athletes to empower them to be able to make the right decisions. What I worry about is what NIL looks like in 10 years when a, a young athlete comes in and signs a deal without reading the contract and does not know the tax ramifications of what he signed or does not know that when he signed this line that he's agreed to be a brand ambassador for a company no matter what his career ends up. So I feel that education is key in this situation. Um, and I work with athletes daily. And I really, I feel like I try to connect with them more than what, you know, they come into my office. You might come in for your knee or your shoulder, but I want to connect with you to see what are your life goals? What are your aspirations? Okay, after you have a finite time to play this sport. What about the next 30, 40 years of your life? So that's really what I'm concerned about. And I know that, you know, as soon as I met you, I told you that you were onto something really big and I'm just happy to be a part of it. You did say that. <laughs> you yeah. did really say that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and I am like, I'm never closing the door to meeting people, to hearing what they have to say, um, to even allowing them to pour into me. I think sometimes too, being a protector, it's always that, that go of, protecting other people, but not necessarily thinking that others will protect me. Like I have to do right. it myself. So opening, putting myself out there and connecting with people like you who, who have a wider vision and purpose than just the title that you wear at work of right. really supporting the community at large is huge for me. And I want right. to attract more people like that because it's, it's definitely necessary. It's needed. Um, but there's something that you said about asking your athletes trying to connect with them on a deeper level versus just, Hey, I'm going to be your sports medicine physician for the time that we're together. It's not about your knee. It's not about that. Yeah. Cause sometimes those injuries could impact the mental health of that athlete. They may Absolutely. think their entire world is, is a wrap at that yeah. point. If they, you yeah. know, well, if my knee is blown out, how long am I going to be? How long do I have to sit out of the game? Will this impact my pro um, prospects, you know, there's right. so many things that's going on because I do think that young people think about the future from a, a perspective of numbers. How much money can I make that could free my family or right. that could put us in a better position? And so when something devastating happens, um, it automatically makes them think like, dang, I'm going to be a failure. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that. Or these per people aren't going to tr truly believe in me. So how do you reroute that conversation into um, the health aspect that we've kind of already covered a little bit, but how are you able to help these young people to navigate all of that, even the worry that they may have? What do you, what yeah. do you do? Like what's the special yeah. stitch? <laughs> yeah. So I think the first thing you have to care uh, number one, if the athlete doesn't believe that you care or have their best interest in mind, your words are useless. So if the athlete walks in and say, hey, you only have the best interest of my team or my school, not me, then you lost that game. Um, so I feel I try to connect with the athlete. Many times, as you mentioned, I'm meeting them on one of the worst days in their career, right? You might have just gotten a diagnosis of an ACL tear or some almost career ending injury where you're going to miss a whole year of your, your sport. And I come in and I say, look, the diagnosis is the diagnosis, but if you're willing to do your work, I'm willing to do my part and we can get through this. So number one, go home, cry, do whatever you need to do. Let's get that all out. And then let's meet again and start to plan about how we're going to get you back to the, what you get to do, what you want to do and what you love to do. And I feel that, Number one, once you show them that you really care and that, hey, I'm in this with you, your outcomes is you know, a high priority for me to see you get back to what you want to do. I think that really helps. And I feel that I'm just, you know, I'm a mentor. I get to hide behind this white coat and I get to hide behind sports medicine. I feel like the, the ball is always the bait to truly get the athlete what they really need. And I'm just proud to be able to have access um, to be able to connect with young athletes. And that's one reason why I love sports medicine. I get to connect with so many young minorities that I would not be able to have access to in many other careers. So, you know, medicine is important, but life to me is more important. And that's truly my calling, I feel. 
Man, that's so good. The ball is always the bait to get the athlete what they need. I yeah. love that because I've heard a mentor say before, you know, you have to you have to basically sell what they want, but give them what they need. Because right. sometimes people don't realize I need X particular thing, but what they want it seems to be a little bit more shinier. Um, right. So I, de- I really appreciate that statement and you being in the position that you are in to really guide them towards something that can support them for the rest of their life, not for a portion, but for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Um, my last question for you, Dr. Burgess, because uh, I want people to, to realize why NIL combine is important. So can you tell us a little bit about what you hope the athlete or their parents could take away from your session because you're going to be talking about how an individual's um, financial position can be impacted by an injury or vice versa. Um, Can you tell us what you hope these young individuals and their advocates will walk away with? Sure. So one thing is the importance of taking care of yourself and taking care of your body, because many times when we're young, we take it for granted that we're going to be healthy for the rest of our lives. But we are literally blessed with one body, you know, to take care of and especially as an athlete to keep you in the game. So you really have to take your health seriously, starting off at a young age, even when you're in junior high school. And as you continue to progress, really teaching people the proper way to take care of their body, but not only body, also your mind and your 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 soul, your connection with a higher power, you will need all of that to be able to be successful. What got you to the point is you're going to need more to get you to the next level that you want to go to. And just really for the NIL combine in general, you know, the speakers that I've already met, it's going to be great to be able to connect with people that you wouldn't have access to without coming through this combine. You're going to have lawyers, you're going to have brand ambassadors, you're going to have you know, speakers of all sorts that will be able to sow into you over this 48 to 72 hour period where you can really almost get a master class in one place. So I feel that NIL is still something that many people um, don't know a lot about. But when you can connect with professionals that are this is their specialty, you have to take advantage of it. Yes, absolutely. And I totally agree. I co-signed that. This is Savani Bros. I approve that message. (laughs) (laughs) But listen, guys, um, no, I'm super excited to have you, Dr. Burgess. And if you want to hear him speak, I encourage that you do come because we have to. NIL is about protecting every aspect of NIL. It's not just this one easy route to money. It's not it's not even that. Right. Right. Um, Because sometimes we it's, it's fast to get money, but it's a slower process to create wealth. So which one do you want? Do you want money today or do you want wealth for the rest of your life? And that's the relationships, the the wealth of relationships, the connections, the collaborations you can do. Exactly. But think about it. Your relationships are connected to wealth, right? Some of the happiest people in this world, they might not, they may say, and this is people define wealth differently too. Right. But some people are most happiest when they have people who they care about in their Connection. lives, yes. people who check in on them, right? Um, because wealth can mean so many different things. It's just not about the financial aspect either. It's about who's in your community, who's out there supporting you, who's out there grinding with you, who's out there motivating you. Yes, you can get it. You can do it, right? And it doesn't mean that you can't have that part of it, that you can't have the financial wealth because you can But at the end of the day, NIL is so much bigger than just a marketing ploy or social media of sorts. All right. And this is why I want you guys to come to NIL Combine in Chicago or attend virtually and definitely make sure that you make the 27th because it's going to be dropping July 27th through the 29th. The 27th is a complete virtual day. So it doesn't matter where you are. You can still attend virtually. But Dr. Burgess is going to be on the stage giving you guys tips. So you can find your health, your healthy zone, right? right? Um, Because we do need to start caring about our bodies. No matter how young we are, we need to define what we want the future to look like. And we need to make sure that our health is a part of that definition that we've created for ourselves. So I want to remind you, make sure that you secure your ticket for the NIL Combine 2023 live event. The price will go up. 
I'm not going to tell you exactly when because y'all need to exercise the muscle of taking action. So make sure you <laughs> make sure you go Today's ahead. Price and tomorrow's price are different. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So make sure you go ahead and secure your tickets right now at bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. And look, student athletes will get a complimentary ticket. So if you're a student athlete, you better go ahead and RSVP right now before there is no more space available. Because we only have a certain amount of tickets for student athletes. So if you know this is where you want to be, if you're a parent, coach, athletic director, and you're like, hey, we need these tickets for our students. Well, you better go to bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023 and go ahead and get your tickets right now before time runs out. Again, that is bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. Make sure that NIL combine is in all caps. And again, Dr. Burgess. It is my pleasure to have you on this speaker interview series, but also as a part of the larger community to support student athletes and their advocates, helping us to break down these barriers that have kept us stuck for way too long. Absolutely. I just appreciate you so much. I really, Thank really do. Much. And um, mm -hmm. I just wish you nothing but love and success for yourself and your family. And um, I can't wait to you know, pop it off on the 27th. So, oh yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be an epic event. Make sure you yes. tune in. <laughs> yes, guys. So if you all have any other questions or want to know more about the event, just make sure you go to bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023, and there will be all sorts of information available for you until next time, guys, I am Savannah DeBrowse, the protector of athletes, and we will see you later. Ciao. <laughs>